Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the Talk of the Mac community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. And folks, it, it, it's way past time. We, we haven't talked to Joe Kissel in so long, and I've been a little worried about him, but he's been going through some things, and maybe he'll tell us, and maybe he won't. But the simple fact is that he is now the author of Take Control. I got to look at my cheat sheet. Take Control of Calendar Syncing and Sharing with Busy Cal, a program that I dearly love. Joe, it's great to have you back. What's going on? Where have you been? Well, you know, uh, as, as I was telling you before we started recording, life is interesting. My life is anything but boring. Um, so uh, I think most people know because I announced it on Twitter and Facebook and, you know, it's been mentioned in some tidbits articles. So this is this is totally public information. But I'm, I'm uh, after more than five years, almost five and a half years, uh, leaving France and uh, moving back to the States. And so I will be in San Diego starting in mid-December. So I actually, I, I used to live there. I, I lived in San Diego in the mid-90s for a few years. And uh, that was actually, interestingly enough, that was where I got my start writing about computers uh, while I was working at NYSA Software in the mid-90s. So um, that's, uh, that's kind of a cool, uh, you know, the wheel turns or whatever. But uh, anyway, so so yeah, that's the bit. That's the big news, and uh, it's a a really long story, as one might imagine. Not not at all a, a a simple, you know. This is why we're leaving, or this is why we're going there. It's kind of involved, so I won't bore all of your you know listeners and watchers with that story right now. Uh, but let's just say it's it's a good move. It's a very positive thing. We're happy about it. Uh, our you know our son is excited because he's going to have you know more space and. A bigger, we, we promised him a, a car shaped bed. So, you know, that's very cool for him. And uh, we will have more space too. And our cat is very excited, you know. Um, so it's, it's I, you know, there will be some things that we will miss, like, you know, great baguettes on every, you know, every, every bakery on every corner. Uh, on the other hand, we will get fantastic Mexican food, which you really can't get here. So you win some, you lose some. Um, but anyway, yeah, there, there will be a lot of things that are going to be new um, and different because of this move. Um, but uh, the plans for the move are, man, they're taking a lot out of me. I mean, uh, you know, when I moved to France, most of these hairs were black. Now they're mostly white. So uh, and they're getting whiter by the day. But uh, there, there are just a million details involved in preparing for this gigantic move and uh, dealing with, you know, stuff on, on, on both sides of the ocean. So we're working our way through those things while, of course, at the same time trying to finish all of my usual books and magazine articles and, and what have you. Um, and, and trying to squeeze, you know, my last few days out of France. Like there's so many things even in Paris, let alone the rest of France, let alone the rest of Europe that we haven't seen even after five years. We're like, ah, oh, you know, one more museum. And uh, so life is a little crazy right now. And, um, you know, I think that the move, it's not like we have, we don't have a house, you know, we don't have like property that we're just moving back to. We're starting from scratch. We have to find a place to live and we're working on that. But there, there could be a, a few steps, you know, it could be like, you know, apartment, short term rental house or something like that. So um, your viewers may see different things in the background in the coming days. You, you can already see no more uh, no more books on my shelf. Those have already been packed. The bulletin board will go away next and, you know, so on. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what pops up in the background next time. But anyway, once once this is all over with, which if I'm lucky, might be by around, you know, Mac world time. Um, I, I think that uh, I'll be able to settle into a more relaxed, uh, happy, more comfortable uh, lifestyle. And uh, uh, I, I think we'll, we'll have more and better uh, discussions in the future. Well, I, I sure hope so for your sake. And, and speaking of backgrounds, I should apologize to you and everyone. I got some new office furniture. I'm in the process of rearranging the office slash studio. So my background is a little bit different. It, it too may change. Um, so, but, but Joe, back in your file holder there, I think I see, don't I see a draft maybe of a new book, uh, Take Control of Moving? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, you know, one of, I, one of the things that I did last couple of days was to go through 
all of my uh, paper files that I've accumulated over the years because the French love paper. I think this means they hate trees. I don't really know what it is, but they're just like absolutely paper crazy. And, you know, I'm like paperless office guy. You know, I like having everything digital. But um, showing something to, uh, you know, a French bureaucrat on an iPad does not satisfy them. They have to see many, many, many pieces of paper. So I was going through all of my papers uh, trying to figure out what I can now, now that I know that I'm leaving, what I can now shred or recycle. And I got rid of, you know, tons of stuff, made me very happy. Uh, but one of the things I found was actually a handwritten outline on a piece of legal paper uh, for a book about packing. Um, and that, that, that never happened, but I had just come back from a long trip and I had all these revelations about, oh, I should have done this better. You know, let me click, make a take control book about this. And, you know, it's one of those things, like it was a great idea. Never, never quite saw the light of day, but, um, if I, if I get through this alive, then, <laughs> you know, uh, maybe there's a book in it. Well, I also, before the show, Joe said he made suggestions for my background and suggest that I have shelves full of eBooks. And I said, you know, implemented that was really great you know yeah well what do you think those three drobos are full of they're all full of joe i had to get three to cover all of joe's books i'm writing as fast as i can yeah. <laughs> more, more. joe let's talk about uh the the new book focusing on calendar syncing and sharing with busy cow and as i said at the top this is a program that i use i endorse i use i love every single day it just doesn't get any better as far as i'm concerned than busy cow and I'm anxious to hear what your approach is to this and, and why you felt a take control book was uh, beneficial. So this particular take control book is, is different in a few different ways. Um, the first thing I want to mention is we have this kind of obnoxiously long title, Take Control of Calendar Syncing and Sharing with BusyCal. And that's not just because we want to jam a lot of words into the title. Um, I mean, electrons are free, but that's not really what we're going for. Um, we didn't want to call this book Take Control of BusyCal because that's not what it is. This is not an instruction manual for BusyCal. It does not tell you about all the features in BusyCal. It doesn't tell you how to use BusyCal. I mean, it mentions a few things here. To, you know, here's you know, a few steps to do this and a few steps to do that. But on the whole, it is not a how-to guide. Um, this is conceptually a different kind of a thing. This is meant to be complementary to BusyCal's online help, which is very thorough and it's very good and it tells you how to accomplish all the tasks that the, the program itself does. Um, but the part that was missing, and this is why uh, BusyMax software approached us and they, they said, you know, hey, take control guys, could we possibly interest you in writing a book on this topic, which is, you know, they, they realized interacting with their customers over a period of, of a number of years. And, of course, I'm, I'm one, too. You know, I've been using BusyCal since pretty much day one. Um, that there wasn't very much confusion about how you actually do a particular activity. How do I edit a calendar? How do I change the color? How do I add a banner? That kind of stuff. Where the confusion was had to do with things like, should I be using a local calendar or a cloud-based calendar? Which calendar server should I use? Can I sync calendar uh, calendars on different servers with each other? How do I sync between you know a server and BusyCal and my iOS device? And they're they're just like this whole long series of questions having to do with um, syncing and sharing and dealing with meetings. Meetings were kind of a big one um, because. Um, Apple and Google and other providers of, of cloud uh, calendar services haven't really done a good job at explaining the conceptual stuff of how does this all work in a way that ordinary mortals can can grasp. So I was I was asked to undertake that quixotic task, you know, see see if I can you know give it a whirl and um, explain in plain English without a lot of you know techno babble. How does this whole calendar syncing sharing thing work so that you can make intelligent decisions about should I use iCloud, should I use Google, should I use some CalDev server, a combination of the above, should I use local, you know, calendar uh, sharing over my local network, should I share calendars, should I, you know, like all these different, what should I do and what different combinations of things should I do and how should I go about doing it and the reasons why, you know, um, why this sort of a thing really kind of auto avoid and this kind of thing will make you a lot happier. So, so that's what I tried to do. And, um, 
I, I hope I succeeded. We'll, we'll see once people actually read the book. But the thing about this book is it's free. Um, Busy Cal, uh, sorry, Busy Mac Software um, was generous enough to, to underwrite this book to, to such an extent that, that they and we are actually giving it away completely. So you have nothing to lose by reading it. Not only that, but this is a very short book, uh, by my standards anyway. This is like 45 pages. So um, we, were, we were trying not at all to bog down in, you know, tedious lists of numbered steps. There are a few, but mostly it's let me explain how this works. So you can wrap your head around this. Now let me explain how this other thing works. And uh, hopefully by the end of these, you know, 40 odd pages that you can read in, you know, an hour or two, uh, you will have, you will say, okay, now I get it. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to, you know, make one of these kind of calendars. and I'm going to get rid of that calendar and I'm going to put this over here and, and then you can actually go and implement it. And, and I've tried, you know, for the most part to, to explain not only how you do this in busy, I mean, it is, focused mainly on BusyCal, but also to, to give you enough background, you can do the same thing with the OS X calendar app. You can do it with the calendar app on your iOS device too. Um, and of course, those are, those are all a little bit different. But uh, basically trying to demystify and, and detangle this, this concept, which is really, I mean, if, when you get right down to it, like calendar syncing and sharing is, is kind of I mean, it, it's messy. It's really messy <laughs> behind the scenes. It's 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 not not straightforward at all. So so that's what this is all about. Joe, we've talked about calendaring before. I know along with email and a, and a lot of things, and it seems like f most of the people that I engage with uh, are either well. <sighs> See, this is where it kind of breaks down because you have iCal or BusyCal on the Mac. Uh, you also obviously now have iCloud, which is syncing everything around. You have Google Calendars, and you have those people that are still having to deal with Outlook and, micro and Microsoft's options. I know there are some others, but in, at least in my mind, those seem to be the big ones. This seems like it should be such a simple thing, and yet you're right. You can end up with double, triple, quadruple entries, no entries. It makes you a little crazy. And then let's throw in the iDevices. I Very first paragraph of my introduction um, pretty much says that, you know, computers are amazing. Computers can do, you know, 3D animation and rendering and they can do text to speech and they can you know sequence genomes it's you know it's 2012 and we still can't sync calendars i mean come on how hard can it be and and it's i mean it's really that that there needs to even be a book about this is really kind of irritating to me because um this is compared to some other technological problems we've solved i mean we put a spaceship on Mars and we can't sync our calendars. It's just really, you know, I'm getting a little worked up about it. You know, it's just wrong <laughs> that, that, um, that this problem in this day and age hasn't been just, you know, solved definitively. So yeah, I mean, that, and I, and I, I can't solve the problem because I don't write, you know, calendar software, but, um, but I can at least explain where things stand as, as, as best I can. Now, you mentioned Outlook, and um, the book doesn't. I mean, the book mentions Outlook and Exchange servers in a few places. Uh, BusyCal doesn't currently support Exchange servers. Maybe that maybe it will in the future. Uh, the OS X Calendar app and the iOS Calendar app do. And I have to say, whatever else you may say about Microsoft and whatever else you may say about Outlook, the actual you know the calendaring part of Outlook and Exchange server is pretty good. Um, I, you know, I, I've worked for companies that relied on Outlook, you know, enterprise wide for, uh, you know, meeting scheduling and, and calendars and stuff. And when, you know, yes, it's expensive and proprietary and only runs on Windows, uh, you know, the server part and all that, but, but really it, it works really, really well. And, um, whatever else you might say about Microsoft, that is one thing that they, they have done an excellent job on. And, uh, you know, most of the other servers, including Google, including iCloud, use an open standard called CalDAV for uh, calendar servers and clients. And and CalDAV is, is okay, but because there are different versions of CalDAV floating around, and um, some clients have implemented features that others don't have, 
and you know different client software and different email software and like all these different variables it's really really hard to get a, a smooth even experience with caldev even under the best of circumstances so uh you know i i explain in the book kind of what a lot of the issues are and why they exist and there's definitely hope that in the future caldev will get a lot better but uh right now um, unless you are lucky or unlucky enough, depending on your point of view, to, to be you know, in an all Outlook or all Microsoft Exchange shop, uh, you're going to have some challenges. So, Joe, how do you approach this? Are you, are you creating recipes here for us to share, or are you doing sort of a and a thing? Uh, because this, it's one of those subjects that is a little squishy. It's almost hard to know exactly where to start. I mean, I know I have a calendar, and I want to share it, and I know that I have iCloud at my disposal. Of course, Google is pretty much free for asking at my disposal. Where do you try to start? Okay, so actually I don't, I don't really use either of those approaches. I don't have recipes and I don't have, um, I don't have any sort of a, uh, um, it, it's, not, it's not really like an algorithm where you can, where you can choose, you know, here, you know, this is this is my situation. Use this. Um, what I, I sort of do it in the other way around. So I say, okay, let's start with you know iCloud because iCloud is also free and iCloud is you know sort of built into Macs. Um, what are the great things about iCloud? What are the things about iCloud? Um, how does you know what what do you you know pros and cons to iCloud? What do you get? What do you give up? Now, same story with Google Calendar. Now same story with you know random list of other CalDAV servers. And then having, having sort of laid that groundwork, I say, okay, now, here are, here are all, of the, all of the factors you need to consider. Now, you know this background in sort of working out your own calendar strategy. And, and what it really boils down to is for, I, I hope the majority of people, it's, it's less complicated than, than, it, than it seems. So it, it kind of boils down to this. If you are in a position where you can freely choose any calendar server or any sort of arrangement of calendars, if you have that option, and if all of your devices are made by Apple, use iCloud, use iCloud only, you will be much, much happier. If you uh, work or you know, have family members who use Google Calendar, or if you use PCs or Android devices, um, Google Calendar is an excellent choice. Um, if you are in a position that you can get everyone in your family or work group or whoever it is you're, you're sharing calendars with to all be on the same server, if it's everybody on iCloud or everybody on Google Calendar or everybody on something else, that is, that is definitely very much to your benefit. And if furthermore, you can get everybody to use BusyCal, I mean, not that we're trying, you know, it's not like, you know, we're just trying to advertise BusyCal, but um, but everybody will be a lot happier. Is, is kind of the fact of the matter. So, so I, I basically say, you know, there are certain situations in which, okay, I know, like I have to use both Google Calendar and iCloud for a variety of reasons, and other people might have to do that also. And if you do, then here are some things you can do to make that less complicated for yourself. But if you have the choice, stick with only one. That'll really make things a lot better. And then, you know, here's what you do if you have to mix them. But the one thing you must never do, um, this is like, you know, crossing the streams kind of thing. Don't, don't try to sync one calendar server to another calendar server. And this is, this is one of the points that, um, that apparently BusyCal customers get hung up on a lot. Um, you have, uh, so you have, let's say you have a Mac and an iPhone. And your Mac is running BusyCal and your iPhone's running Apple's calendar app. And uh, now, back in the olden days, you know, like pre iCloud, pre mobile me, even back, or well, let, let, let's just say more than a few years ago, pre, pre iPhone, we'll call it pre iPhone. Uh, it used to be that you would hook up your whatever device, your Palm PDA or whatever, to your Mac with a cable, and you would sync your calendars uh, through your Mac. You would use iSync. Remember iSync? Ooh. Very well. That wasn't a pleasant piece of software. But anyway, you'd use iSync to sync, you know, your calendar and, you know, between your, it sort of lived on your Mac, it was stored mainly on your Mac, then you'd use that to also sync to your other devices. 
And you could also sync from your Mac up to Mobile Me at, at a certain point, but your Mac was sort of still still functioned as the hub. So you need to you need to discard that thinking now. That that is no longer the case. When you use a cloud-based calendar, you now think of the cloud as a hub. So if using iCloud as an example, um, your phone syncs to iCloud, your iPad syncs to iCloud, your Mac syncs to iCloud, your other Mac syncs to iCloud. The you know the person you're sharing with syncs to iCloud. Everything everything goes up to the cloud. Everything goes up to so don't ever think about devices syncing to each other because that doesn't happen. And if you try to force it to happen, pain will result. Um, so that's sort of one one part of this. The other part of this is you have that you know iCloud is this hub for a few devices, and then oh yeah Google is also a hub for either the same devices or, or other devices. That's okay. You can connect to Google and iCloud and Exchange or whatever with each of your devices individually. What some people are trying to do is to say, okay, well, I'm going to connect. Uh, I want to, you know, like connect to uh, my iCloud calendar with my Mac, and then I want to use my Mac to republish that calendar as a Google calendar so that I will see exactly the same calendar on whether I go to the Google website or the iCloud website. And in fact, you used to, you know, sort of, you know, cross your fingers and knock on wood. You used to be able to do that in BusyCal 1.x, and they've removed that feature from BusyCal 2 on purpose because it was just so inherently unstable. This is this is a dangerous thing to do. That it's, it's not BusyMac's fault. It's not the fault of the software. It's that all the servers are just so different. There are too many variables to to possibly control. And the, the chances of getting multiple entries for things and, and weird sync loops and data missing is just outrageous. So, so the, the new way of thinking is just don't ever, don't ever do that. Everything gets synced from the cloud as a hub down to all of your devices. And if you want to sync to sync every single device to multiple cloud-based servers, nothing's stopping you. You don't ever have to go you know, from your iPhone through your Mac to the cloud. It's all direct. So if I'm understanding you, you're you're advocating setting up BusyCal and maybe the calendar on your iOS device as almost like the unified inbox in iOS, where it's connecting to a bunch of things and maybe letting you see it all together? Right, yes, yes, very much like that. So, you know, on, on my iOS device, I, I've set up, you know, my Google Calendar. I have a couple of different Google Calendar accounts. Um, and <clears throat> unfortunately, you have to... You have to go through some weird extra steps to to set up secondary calendars on Google Calendar on your iOS devices. It's it's a little bit annoying, but you only have to do it once. And there's directions on Google sites, so whatever. So you do that. I also have I have an Exchange calendar account, so I have that on my iPhone, um, and I have you know my iCloud calendars, of which there are quite a few. Um, and so I just set up all those different calendars on my iPhone. Set up exactly the same accounts on my iPad. Uh, set up the same accounts on my Mac. So uh, no matter which computer or device I'm using, I can still see all the same data. The only exception is that if if I'm out someplace and I don't have any of my own devices and I have to look on a web I have to look in a web browser. So I can go to the iCloud site. I'm only going to see the iCloud calendars there, not my Google calendars. I can go to the Google website, I'll only see the Google calendars there. Okay, but you know the the number the number of times like per decade that I am ever away from all of my devices and have to see multiple different calendars at the same time is like you know one and so it, it's like for me that's just it's kind of a non issue so um, so the other you know the other lesson to take away from this is always carry your iOS device with you never leave home without it. Joe, you're right, you know, because I remember doing some of that cross-publishing, and I remember having to stop it because at some point you started to get those, uh, I think you call them sync loops, but also just multiple multiple entries of the same thing appearing. Uh, and, and this approach seems to be so simple, and yet for some reason it's not because I think we have a hard time thinking about our calendar data the same way we think about our email, or maybe we're just not used to syncing calendars yet. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Um, and in fact, I draw some parallels in the book between the way you know IMAP works for email and the way you should be thinking of of calendars working with with cloud, uh, you know, cloud syncing and cloud sharing. It's it's rough, you know, roughly comparable in in certain ways. Um, 
So, you know, some people are going to be really um, disappointed about the loss, this, this capability to republish. But, but the thing is, part of the reason people uh, were doing that was, was based on a, a misunderstanding about the way, you know, sharing works. So, for example, um, some people would say, well, I have an iCloud account, but I want to share my calendar with somebody who has a Google Calendar account. They don't have iCal or they don't have iCloud. So can I do that? And um, there, there is a certain sense in which, you know, as I said before, everybody staying within the same system is much better. Um, but as long as you're talking about publicly shared calendars, like read-only publicly shared calendars, absolutely no problem uh, sharing a calendar that's on iCloud with Google or, or vice versa. Now, private sharing, uh, the other person is going to have to have an account uh, you know, private sharing where I want you know just you to see it or I want you to have read-write capability. The other person will have to have an account on the same system. But I mean, hey, iCloud accounts are free. Google accounts are free. There's you know you 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 lose nothing by setting one up. So there will be some minor inconvenience, but the benefit for everybody will be that it works much more smoothly, and these massive causes of of, of loops and incompatibilities will go away. I can't help but just go back a second to to what you said about IMAP you know for I, I still know people that use pop which is kind of amazing um, but IMAP really made a big change do you think we've had a quantum shift here with the availability of calendars and syncing and i devices and maybe that's why this continues to be a bit of a a, a bit of a, a black art uh, it may be you know I, I think you know I as, as I was writing the book and I was talking to, to John Chafee at, at Busy Mac about all the different you know questions and issues his customers have had, um, it was really evident to me that not only the attitudes or the, or the beliefs of the general public about how calendar syncing should work, but even my own. I mean, I, I realize I myself, who, who should know better, um, was still sort of nursing some uh, very outmoded models or beliefs about about the way this all worked because you know I've been syncing calendars for whatever 15 years or something in one fashion or another and you know if you get used to using email with pop you get used to syncing calendars in a certain way um and you know it it worked more or less then it's 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 hard to reorient your thinking to a, a new paradigm. So I, I try to be very, you know, sensitive to that, but also say, you know, look, people, um, this is the way it is now. So use IMAP for mail, use cloud calendars for calendars, and, you know, kind of get with the program. You know, it, it's not really a quantum shift. I mean, it was a very sort of gradual step-by-step -step thing, but... Um, I think what Apple and Google and other other providers have failed to do is to sort of different, differentiate the way things used to be from the way things are now, and 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 sort of really explain how 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 cloud syncing is is an entirely different thing. You know, because what we're used to from the olden days was like, you know, you have two devices and a, a, an event changes on one, and before you sync, it also changes on the other. So when you try to sync them, they, they collide, there's a conflict, and then you have to say, okay, which version of the event do I want? Well, that almost never happens with cloud syncing because it's all based on, on push for the most part, and or at least this notion that, that the master calendar or the, you know, the cloud-based calendar is always the master. So whatever is in there is the truth. You don't have to, you know, compare all these details among the different devices that are trying to sync with each other. You just know, no, the the, the phone pushes the data up to the calendar, the calendar pushes it down to your, you know, your computer or whatever, and it just works that way across all the devices. So um, try, trying to get into that mindset, I think, will be very helpful. I think that's been a challenge for us because the, with, we talked about it when we talked about iCloud. The truth lives in the cloud, but you're manipulating the truth on your devices. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's exactly, and, it, and it's really no different from what you do when you... Um, you, like you file an email message. So somebody sends you an email message and it comes into a server and your server says, you know, there it is on your device. And you look at it on your device and you say, yeah, I want to file this in my such and such folder. So you go tap, tap. Now it's in your folder on your device. And then two seconds later, the server makes the same change and it mirrors what you've done locally. And it's now it's in the same folder on the server. And and that's that's it. There's no more mystery that you 
the, the, the server holds the master copy, but you, you control the server from your local device. So you, you tell it where to put things, what to do, what, you know, what information to store. So if you can, if you can get your head around IMAP, um, you know, cloud-based calendars shouldn't be that big of a deal. Joe, at this point, I usually say, so tell us how much the book costs. This one's free. It's and, free, yeah. And, and I, so, w- I want to say thanks to John Chafee and the folks at BusyMac for underwriting it. This is, a, this is a great addition to their product, but also a borderline public service to the Mac community and the tech community. Well, that's what we were going for. Um, we hope that even people who don't use BusyCal will find some really interesting and useful information in there. They'll learn more about CalDev. They'll learn more about uh, iCloud and Exchange. And they'll still, even if they don't use, uh, you know, BusyCal, they'll still be able to make smart decisions about uh, calendar strategies. Well, I've had John on the show before. We've talked to him a couple times at Macworld. I'm going to make sure that in the coming weeks, uh, I get him on to talk about the new version of BusyCal and what it all means. Yeah, that's... Um, the new version is is great. I mean, I've always I've used BusyCal since it existed, and I and I've always loved it. Um, but the new version is, you know, there 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 are a lot of the kind of big new features, but there are also just a few little new things that I'm going, oh, thank God or thank John. You know, it's like you know, it's <laughs> it's it's you know, it was always easier to use than iCal and and Apple's calendar app, and now it's you know, gone the next step and it's, it's much friendlier and more comfortable. And it's like, oh, thank goodness you can do this now. So it's, it's really great. Joe, I hope it's not quite so long st- before we get to talk again. I'm, I'm anxious to watch the, the books disappear from the shelf, the bulletin board come down and start yeah. seeing all the varied backgrounds you're going to give us uh, as, as you complete the move. You know, palm trees and beach or whatever. <laughs> It's certainly going to make our scheduling a lot, a lot better, although it's going to be kind of strange. Instead of six hours one direction, you're going to be three the other. So, It's going to be weird. I mean, I'm used to doing these things late at night. Um, it's 10, 20 p.m. here, but uh, I guess I'll start having to plan for afternoons. Yeah. <laughs> Folks, that's Joe Kissel. He is the author of the new Take Control of Syncing and Sharing Calendars with BusyCal, this time free from Take Control Books at TakeControlBooks.com. Joe, we'll talk to you again soon. All right, looking forward to it. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. Mac Voices is the talk of the Mac community. Until the next time, thanks for listening. Mac Voices TV is part of the Mac Voices Group at macvoicesgroup.com. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com.